that's what, that's what we're doing. Um, but thank you all for coming. For us, Nigel is like a big part of why we are what we are, I think. And coming from uh, Northern England, having a brand like Nigel based in that area was pretty important for me growing up. It's kind of an honor to be the person who represents him in, in Melbourne. And great to have him here with all you guys. Uh, <laughs> any requests? Wonderful. <laughs> um, when we started the store, like the Cable and Brand was on our sort of hit list of brands we wanted to get, and we travelled to Berlin to a, a now sadly dead trade show called Bread and Butter, which was amazing. And uh, Nigel was there, and he was dancing to soul music and singing <laughs> to himself freely, I think. Um, in the middle of the showroom and I kind of wandered in trying to look as cool as possible and talked to him about getting the brand on board and we already sort of emailed before that and then and he wouldn't give me the time of day really it took about two years before <laughs> he did and then we started traveling to Japan and seeing him there a lot and finally uh, I was uh, lucky enough to go and exercise with him in the morning entertaining to say the least and he had me hanging off bars proving that he would hang longer than I could here we go Nige I don't know how much shit I'm going to talk tonight but Emily and I Emily does the women's I do the men uh, Emily and I go to Japan four times a year to be part of the selling twice we go to be part of the design because um, we're, we're basically doing three collections we're doing a mainline collection all made in Japan Japanese fabrics we're doing a British authentic collection all made in England English fabrics and of course we have the workwear fabric that we're both wearing which is Japanese fabric but made in China sorry to say that but we have to be economical as well in some way because as you know cable is very expensive so we started the library to try and hit a younger audience so because we go to Japan we tend to try together because we work together we're good buddies it's important to me to have somebody who understands what I'm doing so we obviously we, we travel and work and we get a lot of inspiration from Japan so usually uh, when we go to Japan we may go to somewhere else for inspiration we came to Australia particularly because Obviously, I'm interested in the Australian and the New Zealand Army. Emily and I are going to visit the Canberra War Museum on Sunday. And we're also very interested in surf. I'm already doing a skateboard collaboration with Element. Uh, we're doing the skateboard collaboration with Element, which are part Australian, part American. We would very much like to do um, a surf. And we're thinking we came here to get inspired for surf. Um, I love surf as I love skate, even though I don't do either particularly well. I'm just interested in sport. Surf is particularly good because we are really a winter company. So to be inspired by surf helps my spring business. So we're looking to do something like a company called Army Surf. We have the Army Gym where it's based on all sportswear. So why wouldn't we do Army Surf as well? Um, so. We're here, we're going to talk to a few companies, one in particular because it's an old brand, used to make old t-shirts and, and the best uh, surfboards from about 1971. So we're going to talk to that company and we're just looking, you know, to get inspiration from vintage surf, vintage boards. We love wetsuits, old wetsuits, you know, so that's just all helping us in general design purpose, you know. So that's sort of why we came to Australia. We were lucky enough to find Ghostwood in Byron Bay, uh, which was fantastic, wasn't it? We got some great women's pieces for Spring 21. I just don't really think about the contemporary. I mean, obviously I love fabric. Maybe the fabric makes it contemporary. I mean, obviously Emily's doing the women's and we help each other, you know. So the fabric and colour help to make cable more contemporary, but it's still very vintage orientated. It's just, I don't really care. I do what I do. I've been doing it almost 50 years. I started cable now, so I just do what I do, you know, simple. This, uh, this girl, uh, Frankie, has got a great story, Byron Bay. And I spent about two, 2,000 Australian, which is not a lot for me to spend on vintage, to be honest. But we did spend 2,000 Australian. We bought all women's, didn't we? Yeah, because we did start women's about seven years ago. Em's been with me five. Uh, it's been a tough road on women's. It's not an easy business. I think Paul Smith had the same trouble starting a woman's business from the basis of men's. Obviously, Em and I started unisex initially. Now Em is doing proper women's wear uh, over the last couple of seasons. And um, we're doing really fantastic in Japan. We've opened three women's stores. 
and it's doing well in Japan now we've got to try and make a success of it in Europe I mean obviously it's it's harder because women want to look very feminine generally in Europe so I think Emily looks pretty feminine considering <laughs> but uh, well, but but no considering what she's wearing it's not easy because she's wearing all men's unisex you know but uh, she's doing a lot more women's stuff and we found some real women's stuff um, in Byron Bay didn't we really did yeah. I mean, I know what she likes, like to be honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, to me, she, I mean, wearing coveralls, I mean, love she looks fucking suits. great in coveralls yeah. and dungarees. And to get, to push that look, because obviously, last year I sold about 7,000 coveralls and, and um, dungarees. Last year, about 7,000 or so for the whole year. And, and I think unisex, there was about 1,200 of them. A lot of that was to do with having Emily wearing them on a regular basis. I mean, she's embraced the Nigel K1 woman's Instagram, and that's helped us definitely a lot to get a face. Because if you don't have a face with a women's wear, it's really quite difficult. Oh, and she's yeah. wearing the Indigo cover on. This one's really quite unique, this one. It's all Japanese Indigo. Indigo, Indigo, yeah. that. Uh, yeah, Talk to us about the yeah. shoes. Yeah, true. Shoe. Yeah. Shoe. yeah, well, we both love the shoes. I mean, obviously, I've got this long, um, outstanding friendship with Mahara Yasuhiro, who I met almost 20 years ago. I mean, he's 48 and I'm 69, so it's like 20 years between us, but a really good bro, good buddies. We met 20 years ago, we became friends, and we became such good friends. We, we both decided two years ago we needed to do a collaboration, so we started with the shoes. Uh, he had a pair of shoes on one night about two years ago. I said, I fucking love those shoes, Mahara. And I put them on and I wouldn't take them off. And he said, well, I'm going to have to give him my fucking shoes, aren't I? I said, you are. So he gave me his shoes. And then we, we, we decided we'd do the collaboration with those shoes. And these shoes, obviously, I mean, to be honest, I've put about 20% into this. This is 80% him because he's a super talented kid. These are basically a giant Chuck Taylor with a giant soul. Look like a cake. I feel like I'm wearing two cakes on my face. <laughs> and, and so we started with this, and we've never looked back. And now, you know, I'm, I'm doing touches to it. I've got the uh, the broad arrow on it somewhere. I don't know where the fuck it is. I've got a broad arrow, British broad arrow on it here. Got the orange um, piping on it. Obviously, I'm using Japanese denim. I mean, I'm such a purist. I've got all Japanese denim on. From fucking well, except for the green hat, but the shoe, the 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 dungaree, and the shirt and the jacket are all croaky denim, and uh, so I love the whole denim outfit. I think it's hard to wear a whole denim outfit, but here I am. <laughs> Surprised I've got the fucking hat, but um, no, I always find them. It's a matter of whether I can afford them. <laughs> this is the problem. You know, the most I paid for a piece, one single piece, is seven thousand pounds. I bought, a, I bought a First World War REF sheepskin coat, you remember the one? And I, I, I paid £7,000 for that. Um, sometimes they're too expensive and I don't buy them. 
Uh, the trouble is, the vintage collectors now have become crazy. They are so expensive. So I go to all the best vintage collectors around the world, and you, you know they might have a pair of, like you remember, a Jantics had a fantastic pair of Levi's, dead stock. But he wanted like 5,000 quid for one pair of jeans. I mean, Bertha G in Tokyo, 10,000 pounds a piece. So, you know, I spent 50,000 pounds a year on vintage. I've got, I basically, uh, one of the reasons why I do the collabs is because all the money I earn on doing the collabs, I keep 10% to buy vintage. I've got a few million pounds worth of vintage actually now. But nobody knows really, but anyway. Oh, where it is, Nigel, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. He said, I want to come and see you the next day. He came, came the next day and he looked through it and he gave me an order for 4,000 pieces. I got an order for 250,000 pounds off him in 1980. So I thought, I better fucking take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look fucking like Vietnam, actually. But they're a, they're a US um, vest from the from Second World War built into the dungaree. Do you like these guys? Whoa. They look the fucking business on. They actually come with an army whistle in here. Um, they, they, they haven't come with a whistle for some reason. They've been sent over from Hong Kong. But these are the first pair that I'm going to start wearing these. I can figure out how to get in. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think to those guys? you like them? Yeah. I mean, the big ones, I like. I wear everything big. How fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs>